Good morning, everyone. I am Mary Makeup Play, and here is my PowerPoint presentation in this subject. The lesson which I had to be reported was the lesson three, function of art. The term subject in art refers to the main idea that is represented in the artwork. The subject in art is basically the essence of the piece to determine the subject matter in a particular piece of art. Ask yourself, why, what is actually depicted in this artwork? You know, yung, it is referring to the, the little thing that you, it really attracts your attention, you know, that simple, that really, really catches your attention. So then, what is the artist trying to express to the world? You know, some masterpiece is made up of very, it's very unique, and sometimes it's uh, really hard to guess, but it has a meaning. Uh, every art has a meaning to be expressed, and, you know, it's to be learned also. Then, what is his or her message, and how are they conveying that message? The first one that we'll learn is still life. Still life is a collection of inanimate objects arranged together in a specific way. Look at this picture below. It is a really still life. This is an artwork made by a, a very well-known people person, and. You, no, I don't have time uh, before to know um, the uh, artist of this artwork. But you can see that still life, it is a very realistic. As you can see the on the vase, it looks and the base for the grapes and for the bread. No, everything is uh, no, perfect. Everything is uh, made into realistic. That's what we call still life. Next, and here is the some pictures that is examples of a still life art. Yes, as you can see for the blue flower, you know, it is a very realistic cause just because it's, uh, it has, uh, you know, as you can see, you know, it has a reflection and, and uh, all elements of art are present in each picture. Just like, for example, for number two and for number three, you know, number three is a very attractive, you know, as uh, you as you all observe, you know, uh, colors is uh, is appropriate on the picture, on the artwork. I mean, the second one was the landscape. Landscape is a natural scenery such as the mountain, cliffs, river, and etc. As, as below area is the example of landscape art. You know, as you all remember, when we are on our first year, um, Mr. As I remember, Mr. Defense, uh, Mr. Salamanca, Emmanuel Salamanca, has assigned us to have some uh, tasks to make a landscape art. You know, if you all remember that uh, that thing. Third that we need to learn is the nature. Nature a focus view or interpretation of a specific natural element. And this nature, uh, as you can see, it that comes from the word nature. As you can see in the first picture, second, and on the third, it always always representing the nature, such as the the rivers or presence, the the green, oh no, the forest, the leaves, the grass, everything are present. That all that you can see in the nature, this is present in this art. Protrator, protrator, an image of a particular person or animal or group thereof. So below are the example. Well, this is a portrait of a ver of a, maybe a scientist, but. As you all can see, these three pictures are very realistic. As uh, it has, um, you know, 
um, each part, each part of the picture is very, each part of an art, maybe, rather, is a very detailed. Just like, for example, if you look into this old man, or maybe this a scientist man, it's so very realistic when you look this at the first, and really catches your attention. Then, for this, uh, maybe, a uh, tame lion, or tiger, it is really, really realistic. And also, for the picture below, I don't know. For the picture below. Then, we are learn about abstract. Abstract means a non-representational work of art. So, below are the three pictures of an abstract. This is an art. But, you know, as I could, uh, as I remember when I was in grade 10, my teacher was assigned us to do, to make some abstract art, you know. Abstracts are made up, you know, on the first look, you cannot, you can't identify what is really meant that artwork, what really meant for that artwork, you know. When you look that, you know, your mind will be, uh, have a mix of, uh, to be analyzed, you, have, you need to analyze very well, have a comprehension while uh, seeing that. Just like, for example, above, this is a horse. Um, this is a horse. The second one was the dog. This is a dog. And lastly, it is a big, in this picture on the right side, was a main monkey. You know, at the first, if you look, I'm so far away. When you're far away, you can uh, you can't identify these um, pictures. But if you're looking into and uh, if you're looking into an, an near, you can observe this. The last that we need to learn was the Day of the Dead, a Mexican holiday with a vibrant, vibrant artistic tradition. So this kind of art is a very, you know, it's very spiritually or traditional in uh, some particular places such as in Mexico. So as you could, uh, these two pictures as you can see is uh, somehow a skull is wearing a nice dress on the right, on the left side as you can see as a man and a woman, you know, wearing a very um, attractive colors, um, but they are dead. And the, on the right side, the man is, you can see a young woman, you know, uh, maybe it's a painted hole her face uh, to be look like uh, that she is dead. So, as you remember, the movie Coco, that's how, if you look in that movie, if you watch that movie, that's, uh, that's it's, uh, one example of the Day of the Dead. Then, the representation. It is the use of sign that stand in for to take the place of something else. It is true representation that people organize the world and reality through the act of naming its elements. Signs are arranged in order to form semantic constructions and express relation. So, source of subject, you know, the pin, oh, you know, in a uh, Tagalog, pinagmulan ng ano, ng, ng, uh, kung ano yung, ah, you know, I can't explain this. <laughs> but it is a source of the subject. The term subject in art refers to the main idea that is represented in the artwork. So, as you, uh, as we, you have learned in the first, on the very, very first part of my reporting. Second, the subject in art is basically the essence of the piece, you know. They are very focused, the source of the subject, or the subject in the art is really focused on not such in the one thing, but they are uh, they are focuses uh, in just uh, in just uh, one thing also. First, the primary source. Primary source might also include first-hand accounts that were documented later, such as autobiographies, memoir, memoirs, and oral histories. However, the most useful primary sources are usually considered to be those that were created closest, closest, closest to the time period you're researching. So, when uh, you understand the primary, is that a very, you know, um, kung natantaan niyo pa man yung klase natin sa my FS, 
we have also the primary and secondary storage cells. We also learned that. So, like that. Then, the secondary sources are those which are written about events in the past. You know, they are someone like, uh, maybe some else, you know, like, uh, they are not, uh, uh, maybe, the information is really, it's real, but it ha is not within, it ha within uh, that time or that date. They usually interpret those events through the lens of the uh, time period in which they are written. New discoveries are made and attitudes change over time, causing understanding of past events to change. Facts may remain consistent, but interpretation changes sometimes drastically. So that was the differences between secondary and primary sources. Next, we have learned the content in art. We have a pre content in art, such as the factual meaning. Number one was the factual meaning. The second one was the conventional meaning. And the last one that we need to learn about the content and art was, was the subjective meaning. Where the first page? The factual meaning, the most rudimentary level of meaning, for it may be extracted from the in identifiable or recognizable forms in art and understanding how these elements relate to one another. That's called factual meaning. The second one is the conventional meaning. Pertains to the acknowledged interpretation of the artwork using motifs, signs, and symbols and other ciphers, ciphers as basis of its meaning. This convention are established through time strengthened by recurrent use and wide acceptance by its viewer or audience and scholars who study them. So, lastly, was the subjective meaning. When subjectives are consulted, a variety of meanings may arise when a particular work of art is read. So that's all uh, my reporting about uh, Lesson 3, the function of art. Hoping that you understand it, or if you have some question in this reporting, you can ask me, ask me a question after this, um, after I perform this PowerPoint presentation. So, and that's all.